All right. I'm going to zoom in. I want to. I want my layers open. I'm going to click on layer zero, make that the active layer. I want to turn off my. Ooh, that's not good. I want to make sure my components, though, are on layer zero. So I select them all. I do a right mouse click or a control click. I go to Entity Info. If at any point you have trouble in SketchUp and it's on the wrong frickin' layer, simply click on the stuff. In this case, these are components, right? I hold down the Shift key. I add to my selection. I do a right mouse click, or in the Mac, it's a control click and I go to Entity Info, and I tell it which layer it's supposed to be on. I'm now pushing my components to layer zero. I want it to be on layer zero, okay? This way, I can make layer zero the active layer, turn off location snapshot. Get it out of the way, for now. All right, now, more fun. We're going to import format JPEG. Now, in your goodie bag, look for a photo called Walnut and Charles. This is a JPEG image, and we are going to use it. SketchUp gives us three options. Uses image, uses texture, uses new match photo. Uses image simply means you're bringing in an image and you're going to paste it on the side of a building, like a billboard. Use it as texture. This is where you photograph masonry, block, brick, and you bring it into SketchUp as a texture. Uses new match photo, we're going to import that as a new match photo. So, Walnut and Charles. Import. All right, so here's our stuff. Here are some perspective lines. Here we go. Here is the variables for the left vanishing point. I drag the green lines to follow lines in the photo that are vanishing to the left vanishing point. I drag the other green lines onto the side of the mark three to match the left vanishing point. I take the red lines and I put them on the pavement on that sidewalk to match the right vanishing point. I take the red lines and I run them up the side of Toys Forever and maybe this bank building in the back until this looks about right. Do that first. Okay. Next, the big yellow line is the horizon line. Put that, look at the doors of the Mark III on the left. Put that two-thirds up the way of the door. That would be at about five or five and a half feet above the ground. Once you do that, then grab the blue line and bring the building up. And you'll see our scale figure. She's right in here. She's going to help us select the origin point and bring that down to earth. Scale this up. She will help you. Look at her. See, match her eye level to your eye level, where the horizon line is. See her there. So you, are, you have set the left vanishing point guidelines, the right vanishing point guidelines, the horizon line, and have brought up this blue line, the z-axis line, that includes our scale figures until she matches there. Okay? Now, window styles. You have to, you have, to have the styles menu open. Okay? Good. 
style. Okay, the styles menu is open. You'll notice something here. You'll notice that the building appears pretty transparent, right? We can see the bank behind it. We can see the Mark III behind it. SketchUp always brings in two versions of the photo, a foreground version and a background version. When the Styles menu, if you have that open, you need to have that open. Window and Styles needs to be open. We go to Edit. Sorry, we still need to finish up this match photo stuff. This menu should appear here. Do not, under any circumstances, click on this button. <laughs> Project textures from photo. Do not, under any circumstances, touch that button. Why? What is that for? Project textures from photo was designed so that people could build 3D models of existing buildings. You would photograph all four elevations. You would get, grab a picture of the roof. You would then be able to use that button to put those four photos onto the building. Do not touch that, that right there. We don't want that to happen. Okay? Do not touch that. Okay? Okay. Spacing right now is at three feet, which is a grid, but I think you know, most of you are seeing a grid. That's probably kosher, probably good. Just as long as our variables are there, our vanishing points are right, our horizon line is right, our, our scale has been brought up so that it matches the scale of our scale figure. Okay? And you click, but do not click that. Okay, click done. Next, window, styles, have that open. We need to go to edit. Then we need to click on this little blue thing. And then we need to turn off the foreground photo. Okay? Under the Styles menu, you go to Edit, click on the blue box, the modeling box. Turn off the foreground photo. That will make the buildings opaque. Okay? All right? What happened? Bring it back. Just import it again. Yeah. Okay. All right. This was the hardest pieces of me to figure out. It took. That's why I had to go in the forums and like, why oh, are my buildings transparent? It's all under the styles menu. Menu. You have to bring up the styles, edit, turn off the foreground photo. I don't know why it's buried so deep, but it is. Yes. Mine like disappeared on me. Okay. Okay. All right. So, our, 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 if we're there, if we're there, we're, we're good. We just need to go to view. We need to turn off axes and guides. Just make sure those are all gone. <clears throat> and then we can export a 2D graphic. This will create either JPEG or a PNG. I want a PNG. Export PNG. Click under options. I want to click on anti-aliasing and I want a transparent background. I can and the view size is fine. Okay, I want all that. Okay. Okay, you give it a name. Shred graphics final. A finale. This is a PNG file. Anti-alias transparent background. Export. Okay, we're done with SketchUp. Charette, graphics, and now. Let's go back to Photoshop. Okay. Back to Photoshop. Let's open up Walnut and Charles. Let's do something with this crappy background, okay? Is that sky what we want? Probably not. No. 
probably not. All right, no worries. So we're just gonna we're gonna make a new background. So I'm gonna take a lasso here, and I'm just gonna go around the buildings. Not gonna worry about that light pole at all. I'm just gonna go in here, make a lasso. I'm going to double click on background to make it layer zero so I can modify it. I'm going to delete that. That's now transparent, transparent background. Okay. Make it a new background. All right. Leave that selection open. I'm going to open now. I'm going to look for the sky that I've uploaded for you. Sky for PNG. Ah, beautiful sky. Nice sky. Decent sky. Select all. Copy to the clipboard. Go back to Walnut and Charles. Edit. Paste special. Paste into. One of my favorite things is the paste into. Paste it in there. I don't want to paste it everywhere. I want to paste it there. Okay. Nice soft billowy clouds. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. You need to do that again? Yes, please. Yes, please. We'll go back. Close out. Close out. Open Charles and Wallet. Take the lasso tool. Create a lasso. Selection. Cut out all that sky. Don't have to be precise, because we've got buildings covering that stuff. So we just need to cut out this here sky. Get rid of it. Gone. Delete it away. I want contents to be, well, first of all, I want to double click on background layer, make that layer zero. When I delete this away, it'll go transparent on me. I want that. Keep the selection active. Open. Sky for PNG. Ah. Select all. Edit. Copy. Goes to the clipboard. Go back to our original. Edit. Paste special. Paste into. Paste into the selection. Move it around a little bit. Uh, okay. Let's let's uh, transform it a little bit, shall we? Let's take our, our layer here and let's just you know <coughs> stretch it out a little bit. So we have the nice fluffy billowy clouds over downtown Muncie, Indiana. Okay. Now. Let's go over to the layer and turn down the opacity a little bit. I don't want this sky to be overwhelming us on our final. Okay, just turn it down a little bit. 57, 65, 70%, just so it's not overwhelming everything. Okay. All right, now we have gotta save this, save this puppy, save as, in order to preserve all of our layers in Photoshop, we need to save it as either a PSD file or as a TIFF. Okay, so either a Photoshop file or as a TIFF. Either one. Walnut Charles, Charette Graphics Finale. Just so we have a working copy now, now we can keep working. We just need to basically save something with layers now. Okay, close out sky. Now we're gonna reopen the original Walnut and Charles, the original one. Not our modified one, our original one. We need to go back to our original Walnut and Charles. Yeah, open. We need to grab our foreground elements. Our foreground elements. Okay, so I make a lasso, and I start to work my way around this 
sine. Here, and here, and there. Delete that out. Whoa! I gotta make sure this is active, so I double click on background, make it layer zero. I'm gonna make that lasso, and I'm gonna delete that away. What am I doing again? I'm creating a foreground. Grab the lasso again. Leading away the background. How do you get it to show transparency versus like the white background? Um, when I double click on the layer here, I make it an act. I make. I make it's an un, it, it now makes the background layer unlocked, and so it gives me more power over what to do with it. So if you just take your background layer, double click it, make it layer zero, you have more control over it. La -da -da. Do I care about the stop sign? Maybe, I don't know. I'll go around there. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I don't care about it. I don't know. Whatever. However much detail you want, I can include here. We've redone the streetscape since. There's been, a, of course, a mural now, and so that's all part of it. I'm going to go around this, this here lamp. And, you know, you may care about the lamp. You may not. You might want to bring in a different lamp. I don't know. So, anyway. So I'm just going to go around. I hate these trash baskets. I mean, I think we can do much so much better. <coughs> this is all old, by the way. This is all pre-2015, so it's all changed now. But just for the purposes of our study here, I am deleting away all this background and creating some foreground for us to work with. Okay. Delete it away. Okay. Select. Let's check our work. Uh, get a little, a little bit more here. That's pretty good. Okay. All right. Now I can just copy this to the pasteboard, or I can save it as a PNG. I have to save it as a PNG because why do we save things as a PNG as opposed to JPEG? To preserve the transparency. Very good. Well, Charles foreground. I'll go back to my working TIFF and then I. File, place embedded on mine. It says place embedded. Don't know what it says on yours. It says, is that place? Yes. Place embedded. Wallet and Charles foreground. Place. Boom. There it is. Oop, there it is. Oop, there it is. Oop, there it is. So we're going to put that there, right there. Okay. So, we now have a foreground, we have a new sky, and we have our background. Okay, now, with a new open, and look for the exported version. Where did it export? <laughs> that might be good to know. Where the heck did it export? Graphic. Oh. Just make sure you know where you exported it from SketchUp. Okay. All right. Okay. Now, file. Hang on. File, place embedded. Shrek Graphics Finale, SketchUp, place. 
Ah, that looks familiar. Okay. Alright. Let's put it into place. And put it into place. layers and I just need to get in here and I still need to do a little bit of work I just need to get get rid of everything that's not a building okay so I do need to lasso away this other stuff so I'm just going to get in here quickly and lasso that out way is just to turn off the match photo before you export. But I'm just going to lasso around this. I'm okay with it. Um, I want to bring in my new sky. But there are other options. You can turn off the background photo under styles before you export. Does that make sense? Not directly editable. Oh, we brought it as a smart object. What do we have to do? We have to rasterize, we have to rasterize this layer. Right mouse click onto the layer, rasterize the layer. Okay, so we brought in our stuff from SketchUp. It brought in the background photo. Two ways to get rid of it. Bring it into Photoshop, edit it out. Option one. Option two, go back to SketchUp, turn off the background layer under styles. Remember that? Remember that? Okay, delete that away. Boom, boom, boom. Put now our SketchUp stuff in between the layers of our sandwich. We've made a three layer, four layer sandwich. Sky is the background. Okay? The background photo is the second. The SketchUp is the third. And our foreground is the other layer. Four layer sandwich. We tuck in our SketchUp work in the middle of that four-layer sandwich. Okay? Move that around a little bit. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Right about, yeah. Oh, dear. Now oh, there's two Mark Threes. Oh, dear. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah. So we just kind of you know, move this around a little bit. Well, we get it right where we want it. Maybe it's going to look right about there. Okay. All right. Now, we open, we can, we can start to place other images now. So, place embedded. And now we've got all of these. goodies. If we sort by kind, then we can start to look for the elements that are PNGs, foreground trees, these people, the NS and NWs, the push carts, the scalgovers, the potted plants, the rose bushes, the man on bike. Just start bringing in some stuff. Place. Bring him to the foreground. What I like to do though is I like to bring a reference, a guideline down to my horizon line. Just make sure I remember where that is. Start placing. Embedded as many different things that 
one. Be careful though, because these different scale figures may represent different types of weather. <laughs> You don't want to be incompatible with weather. But I do, I, I want to be mindful of the horizon line, for sure. Of goodies in there, so just browse around, start adding to your digital library. where the horizon line is and just start placing these images in a rank order from foreground to background. to adjust the brightness or contrast of these if they are not jiving. Those are adjustments that you can make on an individualized basis provided that you rasterize them first. You can't modify them in their current state because they are vector smart, they are, sorry, they are Photoshop smart objects. But you can continue to sort of work them so that you can blur them, you can adjust their transparency, you can adjust their brightness and contrast. But you have to rasterize them first. Otherwise, it will not work. As I work, I want to remember that my foreground layer needs to be in the right place. <laughs> if I'm not sure what something is, I float over it with the layer tool. I control, I hit the control key or the right mouse key, and it will tell me what it is. That's the 20 free tree PNG image. Okay, pull that behind. Okay. There's potted plants, there's cars, scooters, people, couples, all kinds of things. So just continue to populate this image. Bring her now all the way to the front. Whenever 
or I'm confused about something, I just I mouse over it, I control click or right mouse click, and I can take take me takes me right directly to that layer. Very handy. right to that layer. For instance, she has to be in front. Okay. This may be, now we're kind of reaching familiar territory for some of you now, so. <coughs> there are a couple of buildings in here. As long as it's a building before 1991, <laughs> the AIA Copyright Act basically says that all architects have a right to the images of their building. So you can use historic buildings as filler, but you cannot use buildings designed since 1991. Or you can be sued by the architect. Just never show it to someone important. <laughs> historic buildings are fine because you know you're well past, you know. But since 1991, every architect has a right to the image of their building. So if they find it, you find a rendering, and you use one of their buildings, they can sue you for copyright infringement. So be mindful of that. Just populate this until you reach a, a level of satisfaction. Okay. Foreground's a little murky. There's lots of potted plants and things we can continue to add. There's more cutouts available for street furniture if you want to replace the dustbin, wastebasket, trash receptacle. You can replace those things. Continue to add different, you know, complementary trees. Sometimes what I like to do is flip the trees. So they look a little bit different, so we start to get them into a mass, right? And so we don't have identical trees. <laughs> if you can find, if you want to plant a line of honey locusts, you need a couple of different images of honey locusts. Otherwise, it's going to just look duplicated. And so it's necessary to, to start to, to have a few versions of each species as you go. You can even get cutouts of pavement. You can see in our list here, We've got a bike lane, we've got a brick walk. These are things we can even start to paste onto the foreground and even take us into uh, different levels there. We can, we can um, bring in people with shadows by simply selecting the area around the person. We, we can actually drop a shadow around them and the shadow actually migrates with them. So that's another option we can investigate. There's lots of different options we can we can investigate as we work with our scale figures and entourage people. If you want to start to get into the specificity of shadows, we can do that. So, okay, but just populate this so that it's enough to get us to to a different vision for the street corner uh, with mass a combination of massing and some foreground elements. That would be very complementary to what a 21st century current day charrette might do with SketchUp and Photoshop. Okay. Before we close this out, okay, we have all these layers. I want to save this TIFF as is. I want to save a version of this TIFF with all the layers intact in case I ever want to go back into it. Okay, Big file. Okay, Then I want to save a copy. I go under Save As, and then I click Save a Copy. And again, this could be a TIFF or a PNG or a JPEG, either one of those things. And it's going to take all the layers in their conf current configuration and smash them together. Okay. However, my version of Photoshop still has the old file here. Right? So this is still the tip. So I, I have this saved, but I have saved a copy of it as a flattened 
JPEG. I'm going to close out and open that flattened version. All of this source imagery has different lighting, different shadows, different values. It looks like it's from all different places. It doesn't look like it belongs, right? It looks collaged. It has qualities that clearly they're from different sources and different photographers. What I've learned from uh, uh, folks at Goody and Clancy, a good Boston firm, is that if we put all of this through a watercolor filter, it will all bring it together. So if we go to filter, we go to filter gallery, and we go to watercolor, and I turn my brush detail up, all the way up, my shadow intensity all the way down, my texture all the way up. It will, it will make everything look like it belongs from the right place. It'll kind of all bring it all together. I'm not, eh, I'm not happy with it yet, though, because it's really freaking distorted. <laughs> And that has to do with the resolution of the image. So I want to go to image size, image, image size, and I want to double check what we're doing here. Oh, it's a really small image. <laughs> right now it's only 1200 by 900 pixels at 150. Well, let's pump that up, shall we? To 300, enlargement, just get that resolution up, and it will affect the effect of, of the watercolor filter. The resolution of the image affects how it looks and through the watercolor filter. And then we'll try that filter again. Now we're dealing with 300, D, uh, 300 DPI image instead. Turn the texture all the way to the right, shadow intensity down, brush detail up. And you can see the difference as you slide these through. Okay. This is now 300 DPI. Notice how she is more recognizable, right? And it has to do with the fact that the image itself has higher And then I will, after I put it through the watercolor filter, I'll move my guide out of the way. I will simply go back into image adjustment, brightness, and contrast because it's a little bit darker now, isn't it? Right? And I might want to adjust the brightness contrast or even the exposure of the image. Just kind of bump this up a little bit. Okay, and turn some of the contrast down. Okay, a little and use legacy, that's even more powerful. It makes these sliders even more powerful. You're like, ugh. Okay. Alright. So now that I put it through the watercolor filter, I want to turn the brightness up just a little bit and the contrast down just a little bit. Now, what did that do? That kind of lightened up our foreground. Now look at her. Look at him. Look at her. They all look like they're from the same image now. They've all been baked together in the casserole pan. <laughs> Right? They came from different, look at that tree, it even looks like it belongs there, doesn't it? Okay. Just when you put everything through the watercolor filter, it takes all this outside source imagery and makes it look a little bit closer together. Okay. And then, save as, Shrek Graphics Finale Flat Filter. your final image. Okay. All right. So now you can populate this further, but we've now taken you through geolocation and exporting to Google Earth. So looking at your proposal as infill from an aerial perspective view, you learn how to export that. You can take that into a watercolor filter too, actually, it works pretty well. We've now learned how to use the SketchUp Match Photo feature to take SketchUp models, your model or someone else's model, that you've placed on a site and then now matched it to the perspective of an existing photo. You've learned how to manipulate that photo, my big context photo, current context photo. That's really good because photos taken from your eye level are better 
than dealing or relying on Google Street View, which might be out of date and which is shot at about seven or eight feet high. Okay? Current imagery that you shoot yourself. You've learned how to match SketchUp to that. You've learned how to bring that now into Photoshop and start to create, create a four-layer sandwich with a new sky, your background imagery, your SketchUp model, your foreground imagery, and entourage. And then you've learned how to all bake it in the casserole pan and make it look like it belongs together, as opposed to from 50 different photographers. Okay? So that is a digital version of charrette graphics using existing resources, using crowdsourced images, crowdsourced SketchUp models, and your photo imagery to do charrette style graphics quickly in the field or in the studio. Okay? So that's the digital version of charrette graphics. And you even saw a video kind of telling us where things are headed <laughs> in terms of parametric and smart models with, with, with local codes and ordinances possibly even being built into the model. Okay, so planning, site planning, uh, legality, uh, uh, basically approvals. If you're, if you're an architecture, then the approvals process will be more streamlined. If you're a planner or a landscape architect, the, the approval side will be much more streamlined as, as models get smarter. But this gives you a digital version of shred graphics style imagery that even has a little bit of reflection in there, right? So it's quite, quite a bit going on there, but it all kind of looks like it belongs there. And with that, that completes the course. Congratulations. You have completed the course. Okay.